Hi, I'm Adam Summer. You're listening to the Yershami Talk podcast with the support of the Yeshivat Devar Yushalayim in Harnof, Jerusalem. This is Kalayim chapter 2, Halacha 1. This is part 2 of the Shear and the Art Scroll. We're 11A2. I want to give you a few things about this before we start the Shear. So a bet seah is going to be the standard for a grain field. That's going to be a sade, and that's going to be 50 amos by 50 amos. Now that's going to be where barley is normally going to be planted, and there's going to be fractions of it. Okay, so you can divide up the bet seah into 24 bet rova. Okay, so there's 24 rova im to make up either a sa'ah of grain or a betseya. Now, this is going to be uh, juxtaposable so that you have a sa'ah of grain for barley is going to be able to be equally dispersed so you fully utilize the amount of grain in this pile to cover this amount of land. So the land is fully covered where it's going to be satisfactory to grow barley on this, where you're sprinkling it out over there. And then you also have completely utilized this amount of seed. Now, the bet rova cleverly is going to be um, corresponding, or the bet seya is going to be corresponding to the temple courtyard. So in a field of trees, that's going to be an orchard. We learned in Meseket Shvias, Halaha 1, Chapter 1, that it's going to be two betsea is going to make up the space for the field of trees. That is going to actually be the temple mishkan, which is going to be 50 amos by 100 amos. Why is it that the orchard is going to be uh, two betsea? Well, because trees are going to take up more space. And that gets into what we're going to be dealing with. Because later on in this year, we're going to be talking about gardens and garden vegetables. And certain garden vegetables are going to need more space when they grow than, say, a stalk of barley. So, for instance, getting back to our turnips or carrots that we were talking about in the first part of this year, well, those are pretty big. And the amount of space and nutrition it's going to use is going to be different than one stalk of barley. Now, the bet rova is split up into 24 sections. That is going to be an opinion that it's a halahala Moshe Lesini. And why are we splitting up this bet rova into 24 parts? Well, we know that when you're cleaning a pile of seed, that it gets cleaned when it gets mixed up at 124th. So if you have 23 uh, rovaim and one rova of foreign seed, are you allowed to sow that? Well, that's going to be the final part of this shear. In some cases, yes. In some cases, no. That's going to be the trick about this shear. So the idea is that we're going to have over here different rates of seed. And that's the key part of this shear for understanding the rest of this halaha. There are going to be three measures. There's going to be one that's going to be slow, one that's going to be medium, and one that's going to be fast. So for instance, let's say to cover this amount of land, okay, you're going to have these seeds and they're going to take up a lot of space. So let's say you go back to our turnips or carrots. So you throw the seeds onto this bet sa'ah, but you don't need a total of sa'ah, a sa'ah of seeds to cover it. Right, because if you did it, you'd overplant it, and it wouldn't work. It wouldn't grow. So you might only need, say, half that amount, and and then you would say, okay, well, what happens if, you know, half of this amount for a garden seed gets mixed up with a barley seed? Is that going to combine together? Are you going to be able to throw that uh, as a mixture? And what happens if you have something that's going to be like, say? 23 Revi'im of uh, barley, and you have one Revi'im of something that's going to go very fast, like flaxseed, so that it looks like, well, wait a second, are they going to add together? The answer is yes, you will have a sa'ah of seed. You have 23 barley, one and one sa'ah of flax. So you say, oh, Adam, very good, I can throw it, because we know that 124th, 
goes and nullifies it. 1 24th, by the way, is about 4%. It's about 4.16%. But anyway, let's say you only have about 4% flaxseed. You say, very good, it's nullified and it counts as a sigh. I can throw it. Not so fast. Why? Because the flax is going to grow three times denser and three times faster uh, to cover the field than the barley. So because this one is going to grow three times the amount, it's basically like you have something that's going to be really like more than a sa'a of seed to cover space. So what would you do? Well, you couldn't use that to uh, plant on a on a uh, the bet sa'a of land that's going to be fifty amos by fifty amos because the flax is going to is going to go too fast. So basically, when you're sowing it, it's not going to be even. You have to reduce that uh, down by um, two thirds, and then you have to add a third of uh, barley uh, seed in order to catch that up. So that you're going to end up uh, reducing it by about another three uh, percent. You have to take out about another three percent of the flax seed and add about another three percent of barley seed in order to do it. Why? Because the flax seed is normally planted very densely. Why? Because you're using the flax seed not necessarily for the seeds, but for clothes. Um, it's going to be for clothes. That's Aaron Udalay, my son, in the background. And I uh, get the be benefit of teaching him Torah because he's listening while he's playing with his toy car. He's nine months old today. Anyway, the idea here is that not only is nullification going to be a thing, but we're also going to be dealing with the rate at which this is going to grow. That's going to be another consideration here. And while looking at the halachot here for the shear, there's a similarity that we should bring up to make it easier for you to understand. And that's going to be what Rabbi Akiva says with the mikvah. The mikvah, we know, is going to be 40 lugin. Okay, you have to have 40 lugin of rainwater. But the question goes like this. What happens if you have 39 lugin and you have one lugin of mud? And it's going to be like pourable mud. Is that going to combine to make 40, uh, 40 lugin? The answer is yes, it's going to combine. But... That one lugin can't purify you. If you're in the 39 lugin of water, you become pure. But if part of you is touching this one lugin of pourable mud, you don't become purified in it. Why? Because the, the uh, one lugin of pourable mud, yes, it's enough to add up to get to 40, but it doesn't uh, have that characteristic to purify you. And it's going to be a lot like this. So if you're adding in, if you have one rova of flaxseed and you have 23 rova im of barley seed, yeah, you have a sa'a of seed, but you can't throw it. And just like you can't be purified if you're touching the one um, part of the uh, mud, so too you can't do this because the flaxseed is also not going to be able to be thrown. Why? Because just like it doesn't purify over here, over here, it's going to be growing three times faster, and you have to look at how much is going to be landing on the amount of area to fill it. And because you're going to end up throwing more of this flax seed, even though it's only taking up 124th, you end up with a problem. So you can't just automatically say, okay, it's 124th, it's going to be nullified, no problem, nothing to see here, move on, right? That's going to be the big part of this. And so... The question is going to be, well, what about combining things to get to this bet uh, sa'ah and this and this sa'ah of seed? Uh, is it going to combine or not? And that's going to be part of what we're getting into today. Uh, and that's going to be Rabbi Shimon's view. Rabbi Shimon is going to be saying that these things are not going to combine. But that's not what the sages are going to say. The sages are going to say that they do combine. And in order to get up to this, uh, this sa'ah of seed. Uh, so the question is, will it combine, get up to the sa'a and nullify? And, and Shimon Bar Yuhai is going to say, no, it's not going to. Sages are going to say yes, and it's, again, it's going to be a lot like Rabbi Akiva's view with the mikvah. So is this pourable mud going to add up to get up to this 40 lugin? Yes, it is. But can you say that it's going to purify you if part of your toe is in it? No, it doesn't. And it's going to be the same thing here. So the Mishnah taught that Rabbi Yossi says 
he must remove the entire quantity of foreign seed for the mixture. And we're going to get into the rationale of Rabbi Yossi's stringency. Again, the question with Rabbi Yossi is going to be like this. What happens if you have 4%, right? It's 4% of foreign seed. And let's say it's the same kind of seed. Again, one of the things with the shear is this, this is going to be talking about three kinds of seed. Okay, you have something that's going to take up less than um, like, the, like the turnips, okay? And it's going to take up less than a bet sa'ah to, to uh, a sa'ah of seed to cover a bet sa'ah of space. And that's because the plants are going to be bigger. And that, that idea over there is going to be that, you know, can you mix the two together and sow them? Not necessarily. But can you mix them together to get a nullification? Sometimes. So the idea over here is that this magic number of 124 is going to be for specifically the same kinds of seeds. So if you have like barley and wheat, that's going to be thrown at the same rate. It's going to be the same category. And over there, if you have the same category, then you have this magic number of 124. So if you have fast growing seeds like flax and something else, it's going to be fast, like say chia seeds. Okay, that's going to be something where uh, they're going to combine together. If you have something that's going to be the same category like peas and lentils, that's going to co combine together. And then you're getting into the same category of throwing and combining up to this rate. And the issue is going to be, well, is it going to um, uh, be nullified? The shita of Rabbi Yossi is going to be like this. If you have the same category of seed like wheat and barley, okay, the majority, once it reaches 124th, according to Rabbi Yossi, you have to take out the entire 124th. So if you end up with, say, 2%, right, 2% is going to be less than 4%, and there's 2% foreign seed, let's say it's going to be wheat mixed in with the barley, and you want to make a field of barley, well, you don't need to remove that 2%, okay? But once you hit this 4%, now, according to Rabbi Yossi, you need to remove the entire amount. Now, what happens if you go to 5%? Well, the question that's going to be coming up in this Gemara is, do you need to remove the, um, the extra 1% to take it down to 4%? Or do you need to take out the entire 5%? That's what we're going to try to figure out with Rabbi Yossi's point. We're not sure. And this actually gets into plowing the field if you change your mind in chapter 2 halakha 2 because Rabbi Yossi's opinion is going to be very much relevant for that. So Rabbi Yossi says he must remove the entire quantity of foreign seed from the mixture and again that's talking about let's say you have 5% of the seed which is going to be more than 124th and it looks like maybe he's saying that you have to take out the entire 5%. So the Gemara is going to talk about this rationale for Rabbi Yossi's stringency and says, what is the reason of Rabbi Yossi? In other words, since he began removing part of the rova of foreign seed, you know, the Gemara says he must complete the removal of the entire rova. Because if he does not, he gives this Mars Ein appearance of being interested in having the remaining fraction growing in the mixture. And that is going to constitute this Mars Ein problem, where it's going to have this appearance of wrongdoing. In other words, perhaps there's really a game going on where the guy, in some context, wants the seed mixed in. And so Rabbi Yossi is saying you have to remove the whole amount, it looks like, in order to make sure there's no Mars Ein problem. So the Gemara says Rabbi Yossi agrees, however, that if there was less than a rova of foreign seed from the beginning, so let's say 2%, right? The Gemara says he's not obligated to do anything to rectify the mixture. So again, less than 124th, which is just over uh, 4%, 4 percent uh, one six percent. So let's say you're at three percent, right? So Rabbi Yossi says there's not you don't need to do anything. The magic number is is one twenty fourth. This, by the way, looks like it's going to be deraita and halhala Moshe Lasinai. And why the Gemara cares about taking a bet sa'ah, which is this fifty by fifty amos area, and theoretically dividing it up into twenty four parts, or looking at the sa'ah of seed, which for barley would cover. The amount of land there, 50 almost by 50 almost, uh, in order to fully maximize the um, space for growing, for nutrition, and also fully utilize the amount of seed that's there. 
And that's one of the contexts with the field, right? The idea of the field is that this is going to fully maximize the, the yield, fully maximize the nutrition being used in the, in the space of this 50 by 50 almost, and also use up the seed. And in the case of the orchard, we saw in Meseket Shvius uh, chapter 1 that in the two betza'ah, you can either fit three trees or ten trees, depending how you're organizing it. And there's a range of between three and ten, depending on the yield of the fruit. But it's basically going to be there's two ways to maximize the, uh, the either the nutrition of the tree, which is going to be for three trees, or the amount of nutrition being drawn from the land. And that is going to be where you have two rows of five trees. And that basically creates a little bit of overlap of the roots, of the roots but the land is being fully utilized. And so too over here, when you're taking a, a sa'ah of seed for barley and throwing it over the, the, the sa'ah, the bet sa'ah of land, 50 amos by 50 amos, you're fully utilizing nutrition there. And so the Gemara is saying that, look, Rabbi Yossi says you don't need to do anything if you have the same kind of seed, like wheat and barley, and it's thrown at the same rate. That's going to be one sa'ah over the, the bet sa'ah. And then what's going to happen is uh, if you have, like, say, 2%, you don't need to do anything. You only have to do something if you end up with, say, 5%. So the Gemara is going to present an inquiry regarding this opinion of Rabbi Yossi. It's going to try to get more into this opinion. And the Gemara says, what is done, what is the law in the following case? If there was in the mixture one rova of foreign seed and it's comprised of two diverse species, does he need to remove one species and is that sufficient even according to Rabbi Yose or does he have to remove all the foreign seed? So according to this opinion, it looks like the rova of foreign seed is going to prohibit the sa'ah of seed even if it's comprised of two or more species. So the, ca the case is, well, what happens if you end up with 124th, so 4.16%? 4 According to Rabbi Yose, there's two different you know, species in here. Do you have to take out the whole amount? Or uh, can, you, can you leave it? And you say that, okay, you've hit this number, and you know, it's okay the way it is. So that, that's going um, to be unanswered. It's going to leave it as unanswered. So in other words, the question is, since it's going to be 124th of the seed, uh, is that going to be okay according to Rabbi Yose, or is he going to make you take out this 124th, which is going to bring it down to less than a sa'ah? Now, one of the things that's going to be coming up is what happens if you plant less than a sa'ah and you, you're leaving part of the land not utilized? Well, the halaha is you're going to go into the status of being in a garden. Right? You're not really a sade of a grain field anymore. You now have the halachic status of a garden. And wh why do you care about that? Right? You say, why do you care? Well, first of all, you didn't fully utilize your land. The second case is now you have to worry about setbacks in uh, gardens. Right? The gardens, so if you're going to plant some other species next to it, your setback, uh, the spacing between this and that is going to be different and not necessarily advantageous, depending on what you're planting next to it. And also in the sixth year, it can influence your ability to plow. So you're going to be plowing on different times. So on a, on a field of grain, you're going to be plowing up until Pesach and working the grand, ground up until Pesach. And a garden, it's going to be later. So you say, well, wait a second, but that might be an advantage. But you go back and you say, yeah, but you didn't fully utilize your land. And so... You 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 know you're you're treating it like a garden, and yes, even though you're growing uh, stalks of grain uh, barley in there, it's a barley uh, garden. It's not a real field, and so you have a lot of things that kind of end up not working to your advantage, namely that you're wasting land and your yield goes down. And you know, in a time of food scarcity, uh, you know it's not really it's not really a good idea to underutilize your land. So. The Gemara is going to continue, and it's going to get into the next part, which is Rabbi Shimon. Rabbi Shimon is not going to be the Hala Hala Misa. Rabbi Shimon is basically going to be holding the opposite of what we were talking about with the mikvah. In the case of the, the mikvah, we have 39 lugin of water and one lugin of pourable mud. And the question that Rabbi Akiva is basically saying is, are they going to combine to satisfy the qualification 
of being a mikvah. And over here, Rabbi Shimon is basically going to be saying that if you have two kinds and you're going to be adding them up, okay, so let's say you have even from the same species, let's say you have 23 rovaim of, or in the case it's going to be coming up, 22 and a half rovaim of barley and one and a half rovaim of wheat. Are they going to combine to make a bet sa'ah? And again, you care about getting to this bet sa'ah, the sa'ah of seed and bet sa'ah because it fully utilizes your land and you end up uh, not getting caught in this problem of getting stuck in the halakhic status of having really having a garden and not having a grain field anymore. So the Mishnah uh, is going to say like this. Rabbi Shimon says that they did not say that a rova of foreign seed prohibits the sa'ah unless the entire rova is comprised of one kind. So the Gemara is going to ask and say, you know, imply that, says the Gemara, two kinds do not combine to constitute a rova. So in the case of the mikvah, it looks like Rabbi Shimon might not allow the two to be combined. In other words, if you have 39 lugan and one lugan of pourable mud, would he allow this to reach up to this amount to be pour, uh, count as a mikvah for 40? It looks like he would say no. And that's kind of like what this mission is saying here. In other words, the Gemara is going to try to look at the scope of Rabbi Shimon. And the Gemara says, to what extent does Rabbi Shimon maintain that diverse kinds of seed do not combine to forbid the mixture? And uh, the Gemara says, up to the point where they constitute a majority of the sa'ah. So if the combined amounts of foreign seed exceed the quantity of the major species, the mixture may not be sown, even according to Rabbi Shimon. So according to Rabbi Shimon, if you have small amounts of foreign seed and it's going to be each part less than a rova, it can be disregarded as long as these small amounts of foreign seed don't jointly exceed the amount of the major component of the mixture. But once they do, Rabbi Shimon is saying the presence of the foreign seed is considered significant enough to prohibit sowing the mixture. And the idea that's going to be coming up is that if you have a mixture of seed that was initially comprised of a majority of small amounts of foreign seed uh, so that it's forbidden to be sown and then and not nullified, right? It doesn't get nullified, even if it's going to be the same amounts. So let's say it's going to be wheat and barley and you have a, a, an amount that doesn't get nullified. You can't throw the seed because it's going to be a Kalayan problem. And the, the question is, you know, can you get, can you arrange it so that you end up getting up to this bet sa'ah and throwing the seed, nullifying the minority amount, and fully utilizing your field. How do you do this? That's what this gemar is about. That's what this whole sugi is about. That's what the shear is about. So the mixture becomes permissible, according to Rabbi Shimon, and the idea is that this novelty here, according to Marafulda, is that we do not say that once the diverse species have combined to forbid the mixture, that they retain their capacity to combine and they do not create a forbidden rova, even when they're going to be a minority. So it's not clear if uh, this rule is going to be when the foreign species constitutes exactly half of the mixture, or the majority of foreign species is going to be enough to prohibit the mixture, or is it going to be a majority of the major species required to permit what's being sown? That's going to be unclear. But from over here, we see that you know, again, according to Rabbi Shimon, uh, small amounts of foreign seed that's going to be less than a rova are going to be disregarded. In other words, uh, it's going to be, uh, they're, they're not, they're going to, he's going to say that, look, it counts, but once it hits a rova, once you have 124th of this, then it starts to um, be a problem. And then basically the idea, according to Rabbi Shimon, is it's not going to combine. And Tanakama says it will combine, um, so that if you have 124th and, I'm uh, sorry, 123 uh, sa'a uh, rovaim of, which is again, 23 out of 24 parts uh, of barley, and one, one part of the foreign species, in this case, of the same kind, again, we have slow, medium, and fast, so the same kind, it's going to be two of medium, it's going to be barley and wheat, uh, basically, once they reach up to a rova, uh, 
are they going to combine according to the Tanakama? Yes, they'll combine. You can say you can sew it. It gets nullified in one twenty fourth the amount since it's the same kind. It's both going to be you know average for throwing. It's not going to be something fast like flax seed or chia seed or something like that. It's not going to be something slow like you know carrot seeds or turnip seeds or and plants like that. They're going to take up a lot more space. So in that case. According to the Tanakama, it's going to combine. According to Rabbi Shimon, it's not going to combine. But Rabbi Shimon makes a distinction, less than the 123rd part. So let's say it's 2%, right? Uh, you know, the magic part is going to be 4.16%, 124th. But let's say it's half of that. Let's say it's 148th, right? So just over 2%. Well, Rabbi Shimon says you can disregard it. It's going to count as part of the seed for making up the bet sa'ah. And... The case like this is going to be like this, right? What's the difference? The case that you'd say is, according to Rabbi Shimon, once it's 23 parts and one part, Rabbi Shimon says that uh, it doesn't add up to be 24 parts in order to be nullified. So in other words, you'd have to add more parts in order to, to get up to the bet sa'ah, where you have to remove part of the barley, but you can't say that it's a sa'ah of seed. That's the, the Hiddish about Rabbi Shimon. And the other part he would say is that because it doesn't add up, it's not going to count as being nullified. That's the Hiddish. So the 124th part, uh, again, gets nullified when you're talking about a bet sa'ah of seed. And basically he's saying that, you, you, you know, a sa'ah of seed, you didn't, you didn't add it together to nullify it. So the Gemara is going to teach another law according to Rabbi Shimon, and again, this is also not going to be the halacha lamaisa. But anyway, it's going to teach us something about multiple parts to try to get up to this magical sa'ah space. And again, why do we care about this fifty amos by fifty amos space? Because again, that fully utilizes the land for nutrition, and also it's going to correspond to half of the temple courtyard. Amazing, right? There's agadic things because. Here you have wheat and barley, these, these fabrics of human civilization. And, you know, it corresponds to uh, half the size of the temple courtyard. And, you know, you can look at, you know, in terms of creation and things like that. So the Gemara is going to say, just as Rabbi Shimon says, that two kinds do not combine to prohibit the mixture. And similarly says that two kinds do not combine uh, to prohibit the mixture uh, nullifying a third species. So what if you have three species and and you have a majority species and you have a minority species that's going to be more than, say, a third species? And in the case that's going to be coming up, uh, are they going to be combining to permit? And the Gemara is going to illustrate, ask, how does this come about? How do you have it where you have, you know, you're trying to get up to this sa'ah of seed to cover the bet sa'ah. How do you do it? And the Gemara says, if there was 22 and a half uh, Revi'im of wheat, so that's going to be your majority species, is going to be wheat. You're trying to plant a wheat field. And then it says, and there's a half rova of barley. So that's going to be, say, you know, t just over 2% barley. And then there's a joint amount of that's going to add up to 23 uh, uh, it's going to add up to 23 Revi'im, okay? So, again, you have 22 and a half Revi'im, and then you have half a rove of barley. So that's going to be less than uh, a sa'ah of seed. So, again, you want to have a, uh, the hal halakhic status of a grain field, and you want to fully utilize the nutrition of your grain field, and you want to get up to that. Well, you need to have 24 parts of grain seed in order to qualify Right now, you have uh, 23 Revi'im. So the, the Gemara is going to ask a question. So, and slightly less than a rove of lentils falls into this mixture. So the combined amounts of wheat and barley, uh, would it be enough to nullify the lentils? And is it going to permit it? In other words, if you're adding in 22 and a half Revi'im of wheat, and now you have um, like one re one rova, uh, one reva of... Um, a rova of lentils that falls in, it doesn't nullify this mixture, and the sowing of this mixture would be disallowed. So the question is, are these two species going to combine if you add up 
the uh, rova barley combined with a little bit of this lentil to get up to there, is it going to combine and, and, and nullify? So the idea here, according to the Tanakama, the Tanakama is going to allow this. And he's going to rule that these two ki uh, kinds are going to combine. It's going to nullify uh, the, the sowing in a mixture. It's going to permit sowing in a mixture. It's not going to be a problem. But Rabbi Shimon says no. And the question is here is, you know, if you have this half row of barley, um, you know, is it going to be nullified by the wheat? And is the amount of, that you're adding to the lentils to get up to this um, to this sa'ah, is that going to be enough? And uh, since, you know, you have it where diverse species um, are not going to combine to permit a mixture according to Rabbi Shimon, uh, basically it's not going to be nullified and you basically are stuck with 22 and a half Rabbi'im, which is not enough. And so in that case, you have a ratio of 1 to uh, 23. And so over here, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be enough to nullify it, and you couldn't throw this mixture because uh, it's going to be enough where, according to Rabbi Shimon, it's going to be Kalim. Tanakama don't say like this. Tanakama are going to say that it does add up, and because these are the same uh, types of seeds, right? So again, you have three categories of seeds. You have slow, medium, and fast. What's in the slow category? Things like turnips and carrots, things that take up a lot of space in the garden like uh, cabbage takes up a lot of space, more than say like a wheat stalk. And then you have things that are sort of like in this medium category, like lentils and kidney oat and grain seeds and wheat seeds. And then what's gonna be in the fast category? We're gonna have flax. So we're gonna get into flax. And again, the Tanakam is basically saying that these will add up to reach up to this sa'av seed and it will nullify the minority amounts and you can use it. But there's gonna be a condition. If this is only if you have the same kinds of seed, if you have a mixture of different kinds, then you're going to have a problem and it's not going to combine. You're going to have to look at how fast uh, these are sown. That's going to be the big Hiddish that's going to be coming up. So the Gemara is going to teach that regarding what case are these words said. In other words, when is it that the amount of foreign seed is going to forbid a mixture of grain at a rova per betseya, when we have a mixture of grain and grain. In other words, it's trying to teach that we have the same kind. Again, there's three categories, slow, medium, and fast, and grain and grain is going to be the same kind. It's going to be the medium category, the average category. So if you're having within the same category, can you get this 124th nullification uh, standard that we were talking about? Yes, you can. But can you get this 124th nullification standard when you have something that's medium like grain and something like barley? No, you can't. So if you end up with 23 parts of barley and one part of the flaxseed, is the flaxseed going to be nullified? No, it's not. So again, it has to be the same category of the same kind of seed for the speed of throwing and covering. In other words, that the amount of uh, space that a stalk is going to take up in space uh, for barley or spelt or wheat is going to be the same as one another, and presumably the lentil plant is going to be like the same. So the Gemara is going to qualify this rule, and it's going to say, on this, the rule of the Mishnah and of Raisa taught that uh, this rule applies, for instance, even to grain and kitten yote that are sown at a rate of three kavin or four kavin per betseya. And this implies that if a particular species of grain or kitten yolk is sown at a rate of only two cabin per bet sa'ah, this uh, species uh, is treated as a garden plant and it's going to be governed by the limit of uh, 1 24th in the amount of sown seed in a bet sa'ah. Now, what's going to be a cabin? Cabin, we know, is going to be a volume of uh, eggs, right? It's corresponding to the volume of eggs. And um, we, we know that there's going to be six kavim to make up one uh, bet sa'ah or one sa'ah, okay? And so if we have one cabin, what is that adding up to? That's adding up to just over 16%. So we have now trying to get into saying, well, what happens if you have 
a type of grain or a type of plant, and the sowing is going to be at a different rate than the other kind of plant. So that's what we're concerned about. What if, that's what this Gemara is trying to say. What if you you're, have a mixture now where one of the kinds of plants is going to be sown at a different rate, and one is going to be at this rate and one's going to be at that rate? In other words, to cover the fully nutritional area space and fill up, and to use up the amount of seed uh, and to, to fully use up the amount of seed in order to cover mountain and mountain area. Now, again, for turnip seeds, you don't need that many seeds to, to cover the, the, the bet sa'ah. Why? Because the bet sa'ah is going to be covered with turnip plants, and turnip plants take up a lot of space. So you don't need a lot of seeds to do it. Now, if you're underutilizing uh, the space, you're going to have the halachic status of a garden. You're not going to have the halachic status of a field, so you want to fully utilize the field. But not all seeds are going to be growing the same size plants. So again, going back to the orchard, well, you know, you can fit on two bets. Ah, you can fit three trees to fully utilize. Say, like if you're going to be taking fig trees to fully utilize uh, the nutrition for the trees. Well, the fig trees take up a lot of space, certainly a lot more than barley or turnips. So you can see that. That's what we care about. Now, the mission has stated a law for garden plants being different, and the garden plants are going to have a, a halakhic status is going to be different than grain and kidney oat, and it's going to be caring about, again, these three rates of seeds. You have slow, medium, and fast, and the garden seeds are going to be put into this slow category. Why? Because you don't need many seeds to fill up the bet rova of land, and now... If you have a mixture between the, the medium seeds and the slow seeds, you're, you're not going to get the same nullification. Now, it may add up to be a bet sa'a of seeds, but it's a bet sa'a of seeds that you can't, uh, a sa'a of seeds that you can't throw. Why? Because it would be kalayim. Because again, the, the two are going to mix at different rates and they're going to be growing different sized plants. So the commissioner says, in truth, they said garden plants whose seeds are not eaten forbid the mixture when they amount to one twenty-fourth of what's sown in the Betzah. Now, where it's saying, in truth, that is saying that it's a halahala Moshe Lassini. And the idea here is that it looks like perhaps this one twenty-fourth amount is going to be something that's a halahala Moshe Lassini in Doraita. So the Gemara is going to explain the significance of in truth. And Rabbi Lazar says, this is the Amara explaining it, in any place the rabbis use the term in truth, it is to preface a law taught to Moshe Rabbeinu at Sinai. Now, the Gemara is going to qualify the law regarding the, the, the plants, the garden plants. And again, if you're planting less than that, you're going to have a lachic status of the garden. You don't necessarily want that because you have some disadvantages there. And the question is going to come up, what happens if you're going to have for the garden plants mixed in with, say, the medium-growing plants like um, like wheat, are they going to they're going to combine to reach a betza of seed? That's one question, and the other question that's going to be is, are they going to at what point do they become nullified? That's what we're working on. So the Gemara says, and on this ruling, the Mishnah uh, from a Brisa was taught uh, regarding this ruling. The, the Mishnah of Brisa was taught, and the ruling applies and says, for instance, in the case of garden plants that are sown at the rate of a kav or half a kav per betza'a, in other words, what's going to be a kav, that's going to be 16% of the sa'a. So let's say you have a seed that's that grows very large plants, let's say a very large kind of uh, cabbage, and you want to fill up this 50 amos by 50 amos space, but you don't need a sa'a to do that like you would need for barley. You only need 16% of that to throw the seeds to fully cover this area of land. And again, you know, in terms of like growing a fig tree, you might only plant, say, three seeds for the fig tree over two betza. Why? Because those fig trees end up becoming very large trees. Now, the Gemara says that this implies that if two cabin of a particular species of garden plants are sown in a betza, the species is treated as grain and kidney oat, and it would disqualify a sa'av seed only with a rova. So the question is, at what point do these start to disqualify and become nullified? And what happens if it becomes mixed in with a different category of seeds? So you have slow seeds being mixed in with medium seeds. 
what, at what point are they going to combine to be uh, counting as a sa'ah of seed and nullifying. So the Gemara is going to notice um, and it's going to say that here in the, in the latter Baraisa, you say that if two kaven are enough for bet sa'ah and it's going to, and the prohibited limit of that species is going to be a rova per bet sa'ah. And here we're, we're talking about sowing two kavim and requiring for covering a bet sa'ah of land. So in other words, that's going to be about 33% of a sa'ah to cover this amount of land. In other words, you're gonna have you're you're only gonna need about 33% of the sa'ah of seeds to cover it. And you know, a, so if you just had barley, you would need you would need you know 66% more uh, to cover the same amount of land with you know plants that are fully utilizing the nutrition from the ground here and fully utilizing the space so that you end up with a sade which is going to be, you know, the halakhic status for a field. So the Gemara says, you know, and here in this earlier Baraisa, you say that the sowing of two cabin requires a bet sa'ah, and it's, you know, prohibited limit is going to be one twenty-fourth of the amount sown in the bet sa'ah. So, you know, how do you, how do you reconcile this? So the Gemara is going to explain it. And the idea is that um, if you're having two different uh, types of, seed here. You're having slow and medium. What's what's it going to be? So the case here, the Gemara is talking about this critical measure where, you know, it's talking about sowing, you know, the rate of sowing is, you know, at a high rate. And, you know, is it going to, to limit or nullify in something that's being sown at a standard rate? And by the way, where are we going to be going with this? We're going to be going where they are going to combine but they're not going to nullify. So the Gemara says that Rabbi Zera and Rabbi Avuna has differing opinions on the same as in the name of Rav Huna. One says any species that's sown up to nine cabin per betsea is included in the category of grain and kidney oat. So uh, one cabin is going to be 16% of a, of a sa'ah of seed. So they're saying uh, 16 times nine the Gemara is going to uh, is going to continue and say that that basically is going to count as uh, in being in that speed of category of, of grain and kidney oat, and that's going to be subject to the rule of one rova per sa'ah. So again, if you're in that category, in that medium category, and you have a different kind in that category, you nullify within one rova per, per sa'ah. But again, uh, you know, at what, you know, if you start mixing the categories, that's where you start having a problem. If you have everything in the same category, either fast, medium, or slow, everything's in the same, one, same in the category, is it going to get nullified in 124th? It is. We, we learned that. But the question is, what happens when you you get a mixture of medium and fast, or, or, or slow and medium? That's the question. Is it going to add together to make a sa'a of grain? And is it going to nullify? So the Gemara says the limit, according to the other opinion, is eight kaben per, per bet sa'ah. So in other words, anything that's going to be faster than eight kaben, uh, you know, again, cover, you know, you need eight kaben to cover this, fully cover this sa'ah land, is going to be treated as um, a garden plant. And instead of being, so that's going to be in the slow category, instead of being in the medium category. So the Gemara is asking this next question. It says, do two types of seed, one that's going to be sown at the rate of nine cabin per bet sa'ah, and one treated like uh, grain and kidney oat, and the other one treated at 10 cabin per bet sa'ah, is that going to be treated uh, where they're going to combine to prohibit the mixture? So the Gemara says, come and see. If two types of seed, one thrown at nine cabin per bet sa'ah, and the other at three cabin per bet sa'ah, so that's basically where one is going to be like, you know, 50% more than the wheat field and one is going to be 50% slower than the, you know, wheat field. That's basically what it's saying, that it's going to combine to form a rova. And the Gemara says, should two types of seed, one thrown at nine cabin and the other thrown at 10 cabin, not surely combine. So in other words, they're saying, look, if you have a garden seed that's going to be thrown at, 
half the amount for the barley seeds, okay? So that's the slow category. Well, is that going to combine with some other kind of kidney oat seed that uh, you're going to have a denser coverage, and that coverage is going to be 50% more seed than you need to cover this land than, say, the barley seeds? The answer is yes, they're going to combine. What is that going to combine to do? You're going to say, okay, this is a vet, this is a sa'av seed, but are you going to be able to throw it? Not necessarily. And is it going to end up nullifying? Well, also not necessarily, because again, they're going to be growing at different rates. The plants are going to be different sizes. So while it's going, it's going to end up looking a lot like this mikvah case. So in the case of the mikvah, you know, with the 39 lugin of rainwater and the one lugin of pourable mud add up to be 40 lugin, yes, it would, right? But if your foot is in the mud and the rest of you is in the water, did you get purified in the mikvah? The answer is no, you did not. But you'd say, but Adam, wait a second, but you're in 40, you know, you're in the 40 lugin amount. Yes, but you're not nullified. The one uh, lugin there is problematic and it doesn't nullify, even though the entire amount is a kosher mikvah as long as you're not in that amount. And over here, you're going to basically be saying the same thing. You're basically going to be saying that, yes, we have here uh, a sa'a of seed, but because this one and that one are going to be kalayim and not going to be nullified, uh, you can't throw it. It would be end up with a field of kalayim. So that's going to be the idea. Now, the Gemara says that Rabbi Avin and Rabbi Hanina both say, the standard rate of a sa'ah sown per bet sa'ah divides between two types of seed. So in other words, let's say you have the standard rate, which is going to be like barley and wheat, and that's going to fully utilize the amount of 50 amos by 50 amos, and that takes a sa'ah uh, size of uh, seed in order to do that. So the Gemara is basically saying, well, what happens if you have different rates? Everything is grow is being sown now where things grow in different rates, is it going to nullify? And well, you know that it's not going to because I told you the answer, but we're going to go through it. The Gemara is going to illustrate this and say, a rova of a species sown at a standard rate of one sa'ah per bet sa'ah, so that's going to be like barley or wheat, that's the medium standard that we're talking about, prohibits seed sown at three kavin per bet sa'ah, and a rova of a species sown at a rate of three kavin per bet sa'ah prohibits seed thrown uh, sown at one sa'ah per bet sa'ah since they belong to the same group. And similarly, a rova of a species sown at a rate of one sa'ah per bet sa'ah prohibits a sa'ah of a seed thrown at nine kavin per bet sa'ah. And a rova of a species sown at a rate of nine kavin per bet sa'ah prohibits a sa'ah of seed sown at one sa'ah per bet sa'ah. Why? Because they all belong to the same group. However, in a case where there's a species that's thrown at three kavin, that's going to fall into a different category. And so that's going to make now two different groups within this pile of seeds. And it's going to be a problem. So if you only have one kind of seed and it's going to fall into uh, different categories, um, then the seed thrown at the average rate, that's going to be one sa'ah per bet sa'ah. It's going to be regarding um, a different kind of uh, rate uh, where um, if, it's, if it's very, very close, it's going to combine. But if you have something that's radically different, uh, it's not going to combine. So it's not going to, it's not going to get uh, nullified. You can't, you can't throw the seed. So is it going to combine to make a sa'ah, yes it will. But can you throw it? No. And did it get nullified in 1 24th of the amount? It's not gonna get nullified. And that case comes up, and we're gonna use the Vilna Gones commentary to explain it. The Gemara says the flaxseed with grain combines to forbid the mixture when it amounts to 1 24th of what's sown in the bet sa'ah. So the Gemara is gonna elaborate. Three revaim of flaxseed forbid a sa'ah of common seed. So that's gonna be where you have um, a, like it's going to be like 12% flax, okay? So let's say you have 12% flax, and that's going to be the very fast growing uh, category that we're talking about. Why is it? Because you're packing in, even though the seeds are very small, you're packing in a lot of flax seed into a, a smaller area 
to grow a lot of plants. Why? Because you're using the plants not for making bread, you're using the plants to make clothing. So you want to pack it all together. And so you want as much density as possible. You're going to put a lot of seeds on it to cover this area to get a lot of density. And that's going to be sown at a different rate than barley. Barley, you don't want to plant that. You know, you're, you're trying to get nutrition out of the ground so you can make good quality bread. That's what you're doing with the barley. So it's different, two different things. And you're going to be using the flax in a different way than you're going to be using the barley. So the Gemara continues and finishes up and says, how does this come about? In an area where one sows a rova of wheat, 1 24th of a, of a bet se'ah, one sows three revaim of flaxseed. In other words, you have triple the growing area for, for the flax. You need three times more seed to cover it. So the idea is that, says the Vilna Gon, that flaxseed is thrown at three times a greater rate than the standard rate, not because the, the seed is a larger size. In fact, the seed is a smaller size, he says, but the flaxseed uh, is much smaller uh, than even the grain seed or the kidney oat, and it's not because of the size of the seed, but it's because the, the flax seed is sown very densely, and the other ske- seeds are scattered more sparsely over a field. And so what we learn here is that if you have 23 parts wheat and one part flax, it you, you can say, like the mikvah, yes, this, this is a sa'a of seed, but can you throw it? The answer is no, you can't throw it without it being kalayim. Why? Because the nature of the flax seed is going to grow at three times the rate. In other words, it has three times the density. And so if you just took out 1 24th, let's say you have 23 parts barley and one part flax. So I'm sorry, 1 24th part uh, you know, flax. So again, 4% flax, 4.16% flax. Did it get nullified in that mixture? It does not get nullified in the mixture. Why? Because you have a mixture of one that's sown at the medium rate and one that's thrown at the fast rate. And so too, if you also had one sown at half this amount, say turnip seeds mixed in with barley seeds, would this uh, get nullified? It would not get nullified, even in 1 24th the amount, because in order to nullify it, you need to either add a lot more barley seeds or take away a lot more of these flax seeds in order to end up where this is going to cover uh, a seya to cover the 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 uh, the the bet rova. I'm sorry, not the bet rova, the bet seya. And because this one is going to be packed more densely, uh, it's it's going to be collided with one another. So you need to really uh, look at the types of seeds need to be in the same category of one of these three categories. And when it's in the category, will it nullify with another one within the same category at 124th? It will, but it will not go from one category to another category to to, uh, nullify. Now, the other idea is that they will add up to make a a sa'a of seed. So can you say that you have a sa'a of seed? Yes, but can you plant that? No, you can't. Why? Because it doesn't nullify. Have a great day.